All right. Hey everybody, Barbara Drazga here. You can go ahead and uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe or the like button on this post, or if you're seeing me on YouTube, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell there so you can get alerts every time I put up a new video. Today we're going to talk to you Amazon sellers. Now I know if you're anything like me, you're a little bit scared every time Amazon makes a change how it's going to affect our businesses, right? So I met this cool guy, Brian Bowman from Ecom Underground, that I wanted to introduce you to, and he's promised to give a ton of content today on how to sell your current Amazon products off Amazon. So how to create a structure so that you can also get sales and start kind of transitioning, um, not just being an Amazon seller, uh, but looking at yourself as an e-commerce seller where you're selling on other platforms and your own platform. So he's gonna give you a case study today of how they did it step by step and the results that they had. So it's not just a, um, you know, just an interview. We're at, he's actually gonna share, your, share his screen and show you how he managed to do this. Um, and then stay on because we're gonna give you a really cool freebie at the end. You know, as a deal diva, I always negotiate discounts uh, or some sort of cool giveaway and he's agreed to give you one of his courses for free and we're gonna drop that link at the end. So uh, Brian Bowman, Ecom Underground, I don't wanna take up any more time on this webinar, I wanna throw it over to you and tell us about yourself. What's your background, how'd you get started in Ecom? What do you Yeah, to? absolutely. So Barbara, thank you for having me on. And I just want everyone who's watching to like literally, for real, like Barbara twisted my heart at the end, like literally at the end, we were just getting everything ready. And she's like, um, all right, so like, what are you doing for my people? And I was like, oh, what do you mean? She's like, I'm the deal diva. Like, <laughs> I got to get him a deal. I'm not even kidding. And um, we talked about it. And we got like the perfect, um, the perfect uh, bonus and, and, you know, the perfect uh, uh, program for you. So uh, definitely stay to the end. Uh, I think you're really going to. I made him change his like, slides and everything before I hit record, guys. No, like, <laughs> for real. Like, we, <laughs> we were changing like, slides. So what are you going to give him? <laughs> So um, anyway, very right. cool. So yeah, it's all yours, so, Barbara. Um, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I'll give you. Um, why don't we dive in? And um, throughout, I'll talk a little bit about my background. But you know, really about me. Uh, I started. You know, I I found online like selling online about ten years ago. Um, I actually started flipping textbooks. I don't even know if this is still a real viable model. But man, back then. It had blown my mind. This is where I first started understanding how buyers have different biases. Like buyers have different biases and they have different ways of thinking about things. And I literally was taking, and it probably was, probably was more than 10 years ago, probably almost 15 years ago, but I was taking books on eBay. And this might, for your listeners and, and for all of you, this might seem like, yeah, of course, we all do this. But for me, I remember at the time, it, it had blown my mind because I could take a textbook from eBay buy it for $5, put it on Amazon for $55 and it would sell like that. And I was like, at the time, like I didn't really understand marketing. I, I was a student, but I didn't really understand it. And that was where I first got my like education. That buyers have different biases and they think differently. And we have to be aware of that because when you start transitioning, and I'll talk about this today, but this is one of the biggest ahas that I think you can have is there's just a different way of thinking when you're going to be selling off of a marketplace like Amazon, because Amazon, you know, it's like the products there, they know they want it, they go search for it and they go buy it. And it's a beautiful thing, right? But when you start wanting to build your own platform and your own brand and your own name, where you have your own customer list, because we all know, you know, Amazon, you know, no matter how thin the pancake, there's always two sides, right? So Amazon is amazing when, you know, it's good when it's good, but it comes with its own risks. Like, like anything, but with it's good come the bad. And the way that you can protect yourself is by building a brand, but it just takes a little bit of different, um, like a different approach. And that's what I want to break down today and, and really get into the details, not just like high level, like fluff. I really want to give you some, some, uh, a framework that you can follow and, uh, and actually put into, put into practice. So, um, so anyway, I went on to build a private label, uh, brand did very well and went on then to do consulting and coaching. And, you know, long story short, that's where I am now. I'm I found at Ecom Underground. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we dive in. But um, Barbara, what do you think? Just dive, let's let's dive in and start talking about building a uh, Amazon proof business. Yep, dig in, it's all yours. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Barbara, if you could just give me a thumbs up or a, a yes when. Sure, and just this... so you know, I'm still here. I'm gonna mute and stop my video so they can all focus on you, but I am here if you need to ask me any questions, I'll just unmute and answer. Okay, so 
We can, can see you, your screen. Can you see the screen? Yep. All right. Awesome. So let's dive in. So today I want to talk about the proven funnel system and let me make sure is my is my video uh, hidden because I don't want to distract them with my video. So, so. You're, you don't. Okay, there we go. You can hide it. Uh, there hey, we go. A lot of folks aren't going to know what a funnel is unless you know they're they're um, they're cooks or they're chefs. <laughs> so uh, let's assume that we don't know what a funnel is. Talk to us a little bit about what that means. Absolutely. I'm going to. I promise you. Uh, you will. You will be. You will be an expert. You will understand not just like, oh, how it kind of works. You'll really understand um, why it works. And I will absolutely break it down. So um, very quickly, a funnel, a sales funnel, it's just a different process of how we convert a customer. It's just a different series of web pages. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a, the really good analogy is the difference between a personal shopper and like going to a Costco. So imagine you know, imagine when you go to a, you know, a Neiman Marcus or like a really high end department store, they have, they have personal shoppers there. In fact, I used to work at a banana Republic and I was kind of like a personal shopper in that when a customer would come in, I knew that I was going to be able to better serve them and ultimately increase my commission because I was going to be able to increase how much they spent if I tailored how I presented to that person. So what I mean is when they would come in, I wouldn't just pick, pick, you know, any random thing off the rack and say, Hey, are you interested in pants? Right. I know it sounds kind of silly, but essentially if you just have a storefront, people can just browse around and just pick random things. A funnel is like a personal shopper in that it's very tailored to that person. So when the person walks into the store, I knew that, okay, the first thing is, is it a man? Is it a woman? Are they tall? Are they short? Are they thin? Are they skinny? And I knew already in my head, I was kind of already thinking, you know, what things would look good on them. And then I would ask questions and I would inquire and they would say, and I'd say, Oh, what, what do you, what do you want to get? You know, what are you looking to shop for? Oh, I have a date tonight. Um, you know, and I really want to impress her if it's a guy comes in. Okay, great. So I know I'm not going to show him, you know, sweatpants, right? So I've already started to eliminate what I'm going to show him and started to curate products for him because I knew the things he was going to want. And ultimately, what do you think is going to convert better? If I show him, you know, uh, a suit, if it's an elegant evening, or if I show him, you know, a dress shirt and a nice pair of dress jeans with dress shoes, is that going to convert better? Or if I just grab a random thing and show it to him and hopefully he buys it, you know, common sense kind of tells you like, well, the more we curate it, the more we tailor it for him, the more likely he is to buy. And that's essentially what a funnel does. And I'll break down the steps and it'll make perfect sense. But always think of a funnel as like a personal shopper. It's, it's curating products for somebody. So they're more likely to buy. And then once they buy the shirt or the jeans, we, we can, we can grab a matching pair of socks or a matching pair of shoes based on that purchase. That's all it is. It's just curating the experience for each customer. That makes sense. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, I've got myself muted. Yeah. It's, I love the, it's basically customization and making it personal. Yeah, and that's why it converts better. Um, in fact, if you compare the conversion rates on a Shopify or a, you know, a storefront versus a funnel, uh, a funnel can really outperform a, a, store, a storefront by you know, four or five times uh, simply because it's just so curated. So in any case, I promise you um, it'll all make sense uh, as we go through this because I'm gonna share real examples, real numbers, and then break down the components of what really makes a good uh, we'll call it a good personal shopper um, in your <laughs> in your system. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this is the proven personal shopper <laughs> system I use to build a profitable and predictable Amazon proof e-commerce business. And when I talk about Amazon proof, all I'm saying is if you're dependent 100% on Amazon, then there always is that other side of the coin that you have to be mindful of. And what you really want to have is a business that leverages both. You know, you leverage that 800 pound gorilla and that amazing traffic that comes from Amazon, right? It's, it's just the big player that you want to leverage and you're smart to be selling on Amazon, but you also want to diversify just like a good portfolio. You want to diversify and make sure you're also building a customer list, building your brand, building your presence so that you're not dependent on any one platform. We never want to be dependent on a platform. We want to build a platform agnostic business. Um, and that's really what Amazon proof means. So Let's go ahead and dive in. And the first thing that I just want to uh, make clear is my goal for today. 
And if I don't do this, then I have failed. So more than anything, this is my goal is to clear the overwhelm and give you clarity on what to say yes to and what is a distraction that you need to say no to and just don't pay attention to it. It's just a shiny object and it's going gonna, it's gonna to deter you from your ultimate goal, which is to transition and to start building this, this brand and this presence off of Amazon. So Warren Buffett is someone that I look up to uh, tremendously. As you know, he's you know one of the richest men on earth, but he's also probably one of the smartest people. People don't appreciate how intelligent this, this man is. And he says that the difference between successful people and really successful people is that success, really successful people say no to almost everything. They say no to literally everything. And I have found this to be true as I've surrounded myself with extremely successful people because they relentlessly say yes to the thing that's actually going to move the needle. And that's what I want to help you identify. The things that are actually going to make a difference. And the good thing is it's usually not that many things that you have to say yes to and focus on. And it gives you permission to just say no to all the distractions. So the, this whole thing of this whole concept and really helping you to build a successful store, a successful e-commerce business, not just an Amazon dependent business is understanding what we call the e-commerce vital few. We have a program called the e-com intensive. And in this program, it's like an accelerator that helps Amazon sellers fast track their growth and build their brands and build their store and build their e-commerce business. And we focus on this from day one forever. This is, this is what will drive your business. And it's the vital few. They're the four things that you have to relentlessly say yes to and just say no to everything else. The first is developing your leads and having a consistent flow of leads coming into your business. That's the first pillar. The second is customers is you have to have a way to convert those leads into customers the third pillar for you as an e-commerce seller is average order value. So it's good to convert customers and we want to increase that conversion rate, but we simultaneously want to increase how much they spend when they buy. And we also want to increase the frequency of purchase. This is your litmus test going forward. If you want to build a successful e-commerce business, I promise you, these are the only four things you have to focus on. And everything from now, from this day going forward, when you're going to compare when you're, going to, when you're going to decide what you're going to do going forward, if you have an option, an action you can take, something you can implement, a new course, a new program, a, a, whatever it is, I want you to compare it against this. And I want you to always ask yourself, will this directly generate more leads, quality leads? Will it help me you know, build my audience, build my presence? Will it help me convert these leads into customers? Will it help me increase how much these customers spend when they buy from me? And will it help me increase how often they buy from me? If the answer is not a definitive, absolute yes, then it's a shiny object and ignore it because this is how you grow a business. So you've got four power levers. Again, I'll just repeat them. It's leads. These are new prospects that enter your sphere of influence. And the reason I say sphere of influence is, you know, maybe they're not, maybe it's not that you have their email yet. Maybe you don't have the messenger contact or you don't have, you know, um, an address or a phone but they're starting to pay attention to you. And this is one of the big shifts that um, I work with a lot of Amazon sellers and help them transition and build their e-commerce business. And the, one of the biggest shifts is realizing that you are now going to start building an audience that's going to start listening to you and following you and, and paying attention to what you're talking about. And you want to focus on building that sphere of influence um, because that's going to be, that's going to be the lifeblood of your business. That's where it all starts from there. We transition into converting them to customers. And that obviously is your primary objective. Average order value is how much they spend when they buy and frequency of purchase. Um, this is, really where, the, this is where, really where the big money is made. This is where the profit is. It's maximizing um, that single most profitable thing you can do for your business, which is uh, uh, repeat purchases. Uh, one of my favorite quotes by Jean-Paul DeJorio, the founder of uh, Paul Mitchell, he says, you are not in the product business, you are in the reorder business. And the context he said that in wasn't, you know, hey, let's do whatever we can to get them to buy again. It's let's give them such an amazing product and such amazing experience that they have no choice but to reorder from us because that's when you really scale a business. And he literally went from a 30, I think he was 35 living out of his car, completely broke to a multi-billionaire in a very short amount of time by just living by that philosophy in his business. So when you understand these four pillars, you can now start leverage, leveraging the law of geometric growth. This is one of my absolute 
favorite things. I'm a math nerd. Um, and I promise you, you don't have to have, you know, a math degree, uh, to, to, to understand this. Um, but if you can visualize this and believe this more than anything is just internalize it and realize like, Oh my gosh, this is like, this is like the, this is the secret right here of how you start getting multiplicative gains in your business by how you really start to grow with small incremental, um, improvements. So, Let me show you an actual example here. So we have our pillars, leads, customers, average order value, frequency, and ultimately revenue. So imagine we start with a thousand leads and the numbers don't matter, guys. Um, This is all, it's all math. So it, it all, it all multiplies out. I just, I'm going to put some numbers to it so that it's more concrete. So imagine you have a thousand leads and you can convert, let's just say 5%. Again, it doesn't matter if it's 2%, 1%, 10%, doesn't matter let's just say 5% to use a round number. So that means out of a thousand leads, you're converting 50 customers. 5% of a thousand is 50. On average, those 50 customers spend $50. That's your average order value. And on average, this is pretty, this is pretty common in e-commerce. You have a 1.3% frequency. So 30% of your buyers are coming back to buy again. If you multiply this out, that means that you've generated $3,250 in revenue. Again, the number doesn't matter. It can, you know, we can, we could scale this all up by 10 and it'll be 32,500. The point is if you multiply this out 50 customers at $50 with a 1.3 frequency, you've got $3,250. Now watch what happens. This is the beauty about the law of geometric growth. If we just have incremental gains, we could have a huge multiplicative gain because we're, we're, we're turning up the notch on the most important parts of our business. Remember the e-commerce vital few. So let's go to leads again. Let's just crank it up by 10%. We're just going from a thousand. We're just adding 10%. Now we're at 1100 and let's take our conversion rate and just crank it up by 10%. This is a small incremental gain. Uh, You know, some basic conversion assets can, can give you that small 10% bump. Again, we're not saying going from 5% to 15%, just 5% to 5.5. 2% to 2.2, just a small incremental gain. We take the average order value. We just nudge it up by, by, five, by 10% and you'll see how a funnel can do this or you know, your personal shopper, how it can do this, right? Hey, how about these socks? Hey, how about these shoes? It would go perfect with those socks, right? So that's, that's the line of thinking behind the personal shopper idea. So we can increase average order value by, by just 10% and increase frequency by just 10%. When you multiply this out, that turns into a revenue of $4,758. So what does that mean? That means that a simple 10% increase in each power lever and each of the vital few components of your e-commerce business resulted in a 46.4% increase in total revenue. So again, simple incremental gains focused on the right things in your business will create a massive gain in your business. And, you know, I would just, I would ask you, I mean, not hypothetically, like actually ask yourself, you know, would you take a 46% gain in revenue if all you had to do was focus on increasing just incrementally on the right things? Um, And that's the power of being able to relentlessly say yes to the right things and say no to everything else because everything else is just noise. So if we look at your e-commerce vital few, again, the question you always have to be asking yourself, if you're going to build an e-commerce business and really scale this, is how do I get more leads, more customers with a higher average order value, greater frequency of purchase? And every day you wake up asking yourself that. And that's your focus. And that's your focus. And that's what you're trying to grow. And your business will grow. This is how you scale businesses. Um, and most people don't know this. So literally right now, just just even you being here, you're, you're, you're already having a paradigm shift of really understanding what it takes to scale a business. So a little bit about me. Um, my name is Brian Bowman. I love espresso. I absolutely like literally just love coffee. Um, and, uh, if we ever, if we are ever at the same event, if we are ever in the same town, I would love to have a cup of coffee with you or a shot of espresso. Um, I love marketers and I love marketing. It's one of my favorite things. One of my passions. Here's my good friend, Russell Brunson. You may know him as the founder of ClickFunnels, maybe not. Um, but you should know him as just a really uh, great guy. He's an amazing, amazing friend and he's been a mentor um, and I've learned a lot from him and I just love hanging out with marketers because they, it's one of the things that, and again, the reason I specifically say this is as an Amazon seller, it's important to start um, shifting your identity. Okay. And I mean that in a very, very positive way because before we can change 
our destiny, we have to start making different decisions. But to make, to make different decisions, it's not just about doing more. It's about becoming the person that makes those decisions. So to grow a business, you, you must have marketing. And you, the, the sooner that you're able to like embrace the concepts about marketing and start to get curious about it and start to immerse yourself in it, the faster your business is going to grow. Because it's one of the things that, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the good sides, right? About Amazon is like, hey, we just, we just put our products up. We make sure we rank. We optimize our listings. We put the right keywords in. We optimize our images, make sure we get a good, you know, a good conversion rate based on our listing and our, and, you know, you know, put, put some, put some keywords in the right places and the traffic just shows up and maybe we have a few tricks to help us rank. Um, but you're not really understanding how to acquire the customer and how to market. And when you're going to build an e-commerce business, like any business, this is a key part of the part of the puzzle um, that you want to start immersing yourself in. And, and you're already doing that today by, by watching this. Um, I love dogs. I love pets. I have two dogs and, and a cat that's Logan. Um, that's how he always looks. He's not sad. I promise. Uh, I'm the host of a podcast called marketing for e-commerce. Like I told you, I love marketing. I love e-commerce. So uh, I put them together and <laughs> we call it the marketing for e-commerce podcast um, with me. And I'm the founder, as Barbara said, of Ecom underground. And we have a very, very simple, um, very simple mission, which is to help empower e-commerce sellers, to help them really build scalable systems that allow them to build their business. And again, to say no to the noise and be able to focus relentlessly on the things that are actually going to work. So um, I love taking, taking the show on the road, um, doing, doing uh, you know, interviews like this and being able to, to share um, information and knowledge that's actually going to empower business owners, empower e-commerce sellers um, to be able to realize what they got into this for in the first place, right? Just to like liberate yourself and really create a better life for you and your family. Um, so I've had the honor of speaking um, at several stages. I was able to speak at Funnel Hacking Live last year. It's awesome. Um, if you are an Amazon seller, you haven't been to Prosper Show, you should go. It's an amazing event. I'll be speaking there this year, uh, actually next week. So if you are there, please, please say hi. I will be, um, I'm trying to get a, a bright green uh, backpack. Uh, so, so I can be easily identified. So hopefully if I get that, look for the guy with the great green, <laughs> the bright green backpack. And, uh, I'd love to, uh, love to talk and meet in person. So I help sellers move from Amazon dependent to Amazon proof by creating a marketing system. They can scale. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So, um, I don't have to dwell on this. I mean, you, you, if you sell on Amazon, you've either heard of this, you've experienced it, you know about it. And it's not about, it's, this isn't like a, you know, I'm not fear mongering or it's not a scare tactic. Like, listen, I think Amazon is amazing and it's an amazing opportunity. Um, people are literally changing their lives because of this, because of this marketplace and the opportunity. However, we just have to be smart. That's it. We just have to be smart business owners and just make sure that we're, we're protecting ourselves. So whether it's black hat competitors, threat of a shutdown, race to low, you know, bottom line prices, because you're not able to customize offers. You're not able to really speak to your customer. You just kind of put it up there and hope it sells. Um, legitimate reviews being removed. This is something that's happening more and more, which is wild. Um, and competition from Amazon itself. You know, uh, we were involved in several niches. Uh, we used to sell, we were in the fitness niche and it's, it's interesting. If you go now in that niche and you, you search resistance bands, Amazon brands, like our brands have pushed all the organic rankings down. So people who fought for organic top spots in the top three are now pushed down by our brands. And there's tons of other um, brands that that's happening. You know, Amazon now is in, I think they have over 126 private label brands that they own and they're, they're expanding more heavily into that. So again, for all those reasons, it's an amazing opportunity. I'm not knocking it. I think it's, it's incredible, but we just have to be smart about how we run our business. Now I talked about this a little bit and I just want to define it again and just, just talk about it really quickly is the difference between selling on Amazon and off Amazon, because this will require a paradigm shift. It will require just a little bit of a different way of thinking, but I promise you it's, it's easy and it's actually a lot of fun. When you actually start being able to engage with prospects, people who are potentially going to buy your product, to get feedback, to really be able to send, you know, I can't tell you that how, how fun it is to be able to send an email and write like whatever you want, like not have to worry about it. Like you, you're just going to actually get to communicate with your customers. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a different shift, but it's a lot of fun. So um, one of the things is we focus on engagement. So we really, when I talk about leads or audience building, it really is about getting people to raise their hand and show interest. Again, Amazon is query based. It's search based. There's a lot of buyer intent. People go there, they search, they want a black wallet 
and they go, they look at the top ranked products. If you're in the top three with good reviews, they click it. If the price is right, they buy, right? There's a lot of intent. When you're going to sell off Amazon, you really have to focus on content messaging and just getting people to raise their hand figuratively and say, yeah, I'm interested. Tell me more. Okay. Um, and I, I call this the straight to offer caveat because cold traffic to an offer. So what I mean by that is people who've never heard of you, don't know your brand, don't know your product, don't know if you're any good taking, you know, running an ad, let's say a Facebook ad, right? You've, I'm sure you've seen a Facebook ad. Um, you click the ad and it takes you right to an offer. Selling that way is possible. Um, we absolutely have done it. In fact, the funnel I'm going to show you or the, 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 the case study I'm going to show you, a lot of our sales came from this, but it's, difficult to maintain and scale. So while it's possible, you always want to be thinking engagement first, audience building first, and that's why it's the first pillar in your four pillars of your, of your vital few, okay? Now, anyone can go out, launch a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, get some clicks, and if you've ever run an ad, uh, you know, <laughs> on the other end there, I want you to sort of like nod your head or raise your hand if you've ever run an ad and you were able to get clicks, you are able to get some traffic, but you couldn't get any sales. Um, this is a very, very, very common thing. And getting people to buy is usually a major struggle for sellers. And as a result, uh, sellers come to one of two conclusions. One, they think Facebook and Instagram ads don't work, right? Or my buyers, uh, whatever that means, aren't on Facebook or Instagram. There's 2 billion active users on Facebook, but apparently, you know, my buyers aren't. <laughs> They're not there. So these are very common conclusions. And it really, it really results, the, the poor performance of the ad really resulted one step before the ad was ever run. Because the biggest mistake sellers make when trying to build their business off Amazon with funnels or with anything, with a store, with an e-commerce store, is with their targeting. It all starts with the targeting. So let me show you an example of what I mean. So if you've ever been in Facebook and you've tried to create an ad, you've probably seen this. This is where you actually set up the targeting. So imagine you sell a watch. Okay. You have a, you have your own line of watches or you have, um, you have exclusives with a watch company or your wholesaling watches and you potentially could build a watch store, you know, watch world. Um, so you think, all right, let's, let's run an ad. We fulfill in the U S right. Cause one of the beauties about selling on Amazon and having FBA is you can integrate FBA directly into your store into your Shopify store or your, or into GrooveCard or into, um, uh, click funnels, whatever you're using. You could, it doesn't matter. The platform doesn't matter. You can integrate it, not pay the referral fee and uh, FBA will fulfill it through MCF, multi-channel fulfillment. So that's one of the beauties. You can actually use Amazon as your fulfillment center and not pay the referral fee that you would pay on Amazon because the sale didn't happen on Amazon. But imagine you are targeting here and you're going to sell this product. So you're like, all right, US, I got FBA, um, you know, 25 to 45 men, and let's just target some watches, like Fossil, Guest Watches, Pulsar, and Swatch. Like this is a very, very common scenario if, you know, for, for someone who was selling watches. Well, the problem is everybody else is doing this too, okay? So there's, just like there's two, over 2 billion active users, um, there's something, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's like 8 million active advertisers who are spending a lot, a lot of money on ads. So what ends up happening is you end up getting ads that look like this where literally the same watch is on the ad, getting targeted to the same people. There's no differentiation. Like literally, I mean, if you look at this watch on the left and the watch on the right, these are just two random screenshots I've grabbed and it's the same watch, like the, <laughs> the, the airplane's in a different position, that's it. But otherwise, it's generic, people have seen it and they get, they get ad fatigue and, bl and ad blindness very, very quickly, so conversion rates suffer. Click-through rates suffer, everything suffers. So the answer is to shift your focus from driving traffic to creating audiences. And that's why audiences and leads, that was that first pillar. So let me, um, let me explain to you the difference with sort of an analogy here. So imagine on the left, this is driving traffic. And we'll say driving traffic is what we were doing before, where we're picking the different watch companies and we're like, all right, let's just send them an ad and, you know, the, the, the traffic's going to come and we're going to make all these sales. Well, Imagine that on the left, this image, that's, that's driving traffic. And you are, um, you're, you sell ties, right? So we got some guys here who sell ties. So this is, you did some good targeting, right? You picked, a, you picked a busy street in New York or wherever this is. And we got one guy there who's a red tie. We got another guy with a blue tie there. And you set up shop on the sidewalk here. Well, if you're the only person there, then you might have a decent chance. If you say, hey, you know, I'm selling ties, selling ties. You make a decent offer, two for one. 
these guys might actually shop, stop and, you know, and, and grab a tie. But what happens when there's 100 people on the same, on the same sidewalk or 100,000 or a million? All of a sudden, it gets really competitive and now it's just a bunch of noise and those guys are just walking right by. The difference is on the right. On the right, this is an audience. And this audience is there. They chose to be there. They're paying attention. They're applauding for what's on stage and you need to be the one on stage. You need to be the one connecting with that audience where they actually want to hear from you. They want to engage with you. And when it comes time to make an offer, there's a percentage of those people that are going to be ready to buy your ties because you've built that bond with them. So that's really the difference between traffic and audience. And that's why the future of marketing, it's going to force all of us to be better marketers. All of this noise forces us to really connect with our customers, which at the end of the day, it's a really, really fun ride when you're building a brand and in a, in a, in a business that really engages with its, uh, with its customers. So how to build audiences. There are a lot of ways to build audiences. You can build an email list. You can have your list of buyers, right? This is definitely an audience. This is, this is what we call your, your hot audience. This is your hot buyers. They're the most aware and they just, they love you. They've already bought from you and they're your best prospects. Um, you have shoppers, people who visited your store, but haven't bought yet. Well, that's, that's an audience for sure. You have Instagram followers. You've got Facebook fan pages. You know, I love running. I love ties, <laughs> whatever we want to call it, uh, blog articles that you can put out, YouTube channel, messenger, you know, I'm sure you heard of messenger bots and messenger marketing. You, know, you can build a list, an audience in messenger and communicate with them. You have video views. This is something a lot of people don't know, but you know, video, you can actually create audiences of people who've watched your videos. Um, so think of how cool that is where you can create content around your product, whether it's product demos or, or, um, you know, uh, uh, just a uh, showing how your product works, educational videos about your, about your product, and you can actually create audiences around people who watch those videos. You can have a podcast. I believe this is one of the most underutilized audience building strategies in e-commerce. Um, you know, if you sell, if you sell things that campers are going to love, you should have a camping podcast, or you should consider it because that's um, an amazing audience to build. I have a podcast, and I can tell you. It's an incredible, incredible audience that is very, very engaged. Um, so these are all options and none of them is better than the other. It really just depends on your time, your resources, and, and which one you want to start with. You know, email is always the one to start with because it's not going anywhere. So building an email list is a great place to start, but I'd encourage you to explore these other ones because they're really easy, especially with that smartphone you have, which, you know, it shoots 4K video now. It's, it's incredible what, uh, what our phones can do now and the quality of content we can create. So a big thing you have to do, and, and you know, I, I don't know if you were expecting this. You were probably thinking, all right, we're going to form an e-commerce business, so we're going to start running ads. Well, I promise you, the way that you, you elevate your game to another level and you leave everyone in your dust is you do this stuff first. This, this pre-work, you know, I'm sure you've heard the Abraham Lincoln quote, right? Um, if I had four hours to chop down a tree, you know, I'd spend the first three hours sharpening my, my axe, right? Um, I think that was Abraham Lincoln. Who knows? Maybe it was Washington. I get my, I get my historical figures confused all the time. Um, pretty soon it'll be, yeah, Brian, this guy, Brian said, you got to sharpen your ax. Um, so, but that really is true with this is like, this is you sharpening your ax. So you've got a razor sharp blade when you go out there and start running your ads and start driving traffic. So the first piece is who's your ideal buyer? Like you've got to get really clear on this. And I know you probably think, well, I'd sell, you know, I sell socks. I don't know. I just sell a bunch of different socks. All right. Well, who's buying your socks? And at first you're not going to know because you sell on Amazon. You don't know who's buying. You don't know who's, you don't know where they go. They just buy your stuff and you just keep sending in inventory to FBA, right? Well, you got to take a guess and it's something that you're going to refine over time. But at first you have to have at least a starting point because that's, what's going to start. That, that's how you're going to know what to stay, what to say from that stage to get the people to applaud and to keep coming into that, you know, to that auditorium and, and becoming part of your audience. So you have to know who your buyer is and you want to identify, this is something most people overlook, who's the category king? Who's the big player in your space? You know, you sell socks. Well, you know, you probably want to look at what Bombas is doing or, you know, some other player that is clearly winning. Because one of the big misconceptions is people think that to be a great marketer requires all this creativity, right? So much of marketing is building up what we call a swipe file of ideas, of things that we could potentially use. And we don't copy. We never copy, but we model things that we know work and we just put our twist on it. Um, 
one of the best copywriters ever, direct response copywriters is Dan Kennedy. And he is like so well known for having this treasure trove. I mean, he has an entire room in his home that is just full of old copy of newspaper clippings and, and postcards and, and, and product and direct mail inserts, all this stuff. Um, and I mean, this is one of the best in the world and he's got one of the biggest swipe files and it's no coincidence. So figure out who the winners are and start paying attention, opt into everything they do, figure out what's happening below the surface and model what's happening, like model what they're doing. Look, what emails are they sending you? What offers, what prices, what products, and really start understanding who those competitors are. The next is pick the right traffic source. So you can have all this together, but if you start, you know, screaming from the wrong mountaintop, no one's going to pay attention. So you got to pick the right platform. Some general rules of thumb. Facebook is perfect for 40 to 70 year old uh, buyers. Instagram, one thing to know is 90% of users on Instagram are under 30. Pinterest is still, we still see the highest ROI on the female demographic. So keep that in mind. Um, and AdWords is particularly useful if you have just-in-time items. What I mean by just-in-time items are, do you sell something that no one thinks about until they need it? Like, no one's thinking about getting a knee brace until their knee hurts. If that's the case, AdWords might be a really good platform for you to start with because people are going to do what? They're going to go, they're going to type knee brace for pain or whatever, and um, your, your items will pop up and then, you know, that starts, the, that starts that conversion process. Then you have to test lots of audiences and creatives. This is another big mistake. We call this, uh, this is part of, we have six rules called our, 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 um, our paid ads principles. And this is one of them, which is you've got to go wide before you can go narrow. Most people try to create the perfect ad. It doesn't work. And they're like, ah, ads don't work or whatever doesn't work, whatever channel they tried. Um, especially with ads, you've got to go wide, test small budgets on a lot of different creative and then narrow down to the ones that are winning. Um, we actually start every campaign with 256 ads. I know that sounds like, what? That's not possible. Um, we start really small budgets and we look for signs of life and we scale the ones that are winning. And we create these ads by using combinations of just four images, four copy angles, and you know, 16 audiences that we're just gonna test. Again, we're just putting hooks in the water and we're just seeing is anyone biting. If we get a couple nibbles, you know, we, a couple tugs on the line, then we focus our efforts there, but we don't focus on things. We don't put any, any time or attention, right? We say no to almost everything, but those few audiences that are hitting, boom, we go after those. So keep that in mind when you start testing um, and you'll have the right, the right mindset, and the right temperament to go into it realizing, hey, most of this probably won't work, but the ones that do, are that's where that's that's like your um your vein of gold right that's that's where the, the the big splash happens all right so let's talk about funnels versus storefront because i know i've been throwing this word funnel around and i know some of you listening to this you're probably like oh yeah i know what a funnel is i've you know <laughs> i've seen the ads um and others are just like yeah i have no clue um so i, I kind of already alluded to this but let me just uh break it down again so funnels um they typically convert higher because there's less options so a funnel, and the, the terminology doesn't matter. All it is, is it's, it's just instead of having a storefront with a bunch of items everywhere with drop down menus and, and categories and bestsellers and a blog and videos and all this stuff that can distract you, you go to a sales page, a funnel, and it's just one page about one product or one offer and that's it. And you've basically got two options. You click the button and you buy, or you leave. That's it. So you kind of put the blinders on, on the, on the prospect. Now we obviously want to make compelling offers. We want to make sure that it's exactly what they want. And that's where the personal shopper comes into play. You know, if they came from an ad that talked about elegant evening wear, well, we're going to send them to a, the first page, right? The first web page of this funnel, we're going to send them to a page. That's what we call congruent with that. It's going to be a page that is going to, it's going to make them feel like it's the next step from that ad. It's going to talk about elegant evening wear. It might have some women that are beautiful and, and, you know, and, and going out or whatever it might be, but it's going to be very congruent. Okay. So that's where that personal shopper analogy comes in. Cause now it's not just, Hey, want some stuff like going to Costco with a big cart and throwing everything into the cart. It's here's the thing. Here's the suit that I'm showing you. Okay. And you say, yep, I'll buy the suit. Got it. And what, and what, is it, what happens next? Oh, do you, do you have a shirt for that? 
Uh, no, I guess I don't. All right, well, great. So we got this shirt. Okay, I'll take it. And what happens next? Oh, but you need a tie. It's an amazing suit. So here you go. And do you have shoes? If you do, it's okay. But you know, maybe, maybe you don't, right? So that's, that's what a funnel is. It's basically a personal shopper automated um, in a series of web pages. So hopefully that um, hopefully that clarified more than, more than confused you. So, um, that's why it converts so much better because it's very tailored. However, and you're probably thinking, well, let's just use funnels all the time. Well, it's really good to acquire the customer, but on the back end, after they're a customer, we want to let the reins off, right? Like we want to let them go. Um, once you get somebody who's really into stand up paddle boarding, I don't know, just pick a random example. Um, once I've converted them and they're one of my customers, now I want them to just go crazy in the stand-up pedal boarding store, right? I want them to click on everything and add, a, add things to their cart and, um, you know, try out things they've never tried, suggest things for them. Like now I want an immersive experience. And that's where storefronts are amazing. Your Shopify, your Groovecart, your, you know, Magento, BigCommerce, whatever you're using, um, that's where a storefront can be, can be really powerful. So we use funnels first to acquire the customer. We use the storefront on the back end to give them like that immersive um, experience. So the funnel structure, here's the funnel that we use again on the front end to get somebody as a customer. So the first page is called a sales page. Sales page just means it's the page that has the information about the product or about the offer. And it has a button that says, yes, I want to buy now. They click the button and it takes them to an order form where they input their, um, their address, their shipping, their credit card, right? They're going to buy. And then there's a thing called an order bump. And all this is, is a little checkbox. This is before they pay where they say, yep, I'll throw in that extra thing. So think of when you're checking out at the grocery store, you've got everything. And what do they do? And it's no accident that that end cap has magazines, candies, hand sanitizer, and you know, uh, gift cards, right? It's just like one last thing to toss into the cart. Hey, I'm spending a hundred bucks. Why not? Why not throw an extra four bucks in there? What's, what's the big deal, right? So that's what the order bump is. It's a pre-purchase upsell. We're upselling them something before they actually pay. And there's actually really good conversions on this. And I'll, I'll give you some numbers for all, my, for, all my math, for all my math nerds that are watching. I love you guys. And uh, I, know, I know you want some, some data, some numbers. So I'm going to give it to you here. Um, so that's the order form with the order bump. Then we have a one-time offer. So after they go, yep, I'm good. I'll take the pack of gum. You know, I'll take the order bump. I'll, I'm going to buy. Check out. Okay, I'm done. What happens? We have a one-time offer where it's like, wait, hold on. Your order isn't complete yet. And I'm sure you've seen this if you've ordered anything online like ever. It's just wait, hold on one second. We have something really, really cool. And usually you want something there that complements the product that they just bought. You know, so um, with e-commerce, it's actually interesting because we can actually offer them more of the same thing. It's pretty crazy. We can sell them vitamins and then sell them more of the same vitamins. And you'll be surprised how often people will say, okay, I'll take it but they get an option at that one-time offer. You're like, wait, hold on. We have this other cool thing for you. And they can either say yes or no. If they say yes, boom, they're automatically charged. They don't have to put their credit card in again, nothing. It's one click, boom, they're charged. If they say no, no thanks, we downsell. So we just reduce the price on that upsell. I mean, on that, on that one-time offer, we reduce the price usually by 20%. That's our, that's our standard. And we say, hey, actually, if you'd still like it, um, we can actually take 20% off right now. This is a one-time offer only, never, like, never available anywhere else. Okay? Whether they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. If they say yes, boom, we charge them, but for the lower price. If they say no, then we have one more offer. It's the last one. We say, okay, no problem. We have one more special thing, and we're just trying to, hopefully, you're, you're already tra tracing this with our pillars, right? We're trying to increase the average order value here. Because if we would have just stopped at the order form without even an order bump, all we did was sell the, the one thing, you know, the pair of socks. But here are the vitamins. Here we're trying to add more to their cart. Um, obviously, you know, in a way that's congruent, that, that they actually want. We're not trying to annoy people here. Um, and that's why a lot of times, sometimes you maybe only have one upsell and that's it. Um, you'll, you'll have to decide, but this is, the, this is the format we use. And then finally, whether they say yes or no to that last, that last one-time offer, it takes them to the thank you page and um, they can, you know, complete their purchase. And there's some links where they can go to the store, they can go check out our blog or, you know, whatever else you have. But really the, the, the sale is done at that point. So for all my math people, for people who want some data, here are some benchmarks. And you can screenshot this, use this as a standard 
when you decide to start building your, um, your funnels, because this is going to be a good, a good thing to compare against. Uh, we have built literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of e-commerce funnels. We've tested them. And for us, we always come out of the gate with these, with these benchmarks. This is what we expect to hit. And if we don't hit these benchmarks, something's broken. Like we got to figure it out. So, um, the average order value, uh, you know, so on average, the average order value, this is obviously going to vary. If you sell hundred dollar products, that's going to be very different from $20 products. Um, so can't really give you a benchmark on that. It really depends on your product and you should have an idea based on your orders on Amazon. Average cart profit. Uh, again, this is, this is just basically how much profit are you making? Yeah. You sold the thing for a hundred dollars, but you know, you got $70 worth of shipping and fulfillment and cost of goods and everything else. So you really only ended up with $30 in profit. And that's a really important number to know um, so that you know how much you can actually afford to go spend and get ads, right? It's no different than like running, running ads and knowing how much your profit is. So you could figure out a cost on your sponsored products ads. It's the same idea. So um, on sales page to order form. So what I mean here is what percentage of people on average Remember that sales page where it has information on the offer and then a big button that says buy now and they click it and it takes them to the order form. What percentage of people click? We have a benchmark of 40%. For every 100 people who hit that sales page, we expect 40 to click the button. Once they click the button and land on that order page, we expect 8% of those people, so not 8% total, 8% of those people to click conversion, uh, to click buy, give us their credit card and actually buy. Um, remember the order bump? Remember I told you there's a pretty high take on that order bump? So, you know, make it something good, hopefully something with some profit because about 25% on average will take it and we've had order bumps that have converted over 50% where literally one out of two people will click it and say, yep, I'll take the pack of gum. Yep, I'll take the pack of gum every time. Um, our, our benchmark for our first one-time offer, remember? Oh, wait, hold on. We have one more thing for you. We got these, you know, this, uh, these other pair of socks. Um, that's 10%. That downsell, our benchmark is 10% and our uh, one-time offer, the final one, as expected, it's going to be lower because at this point they're like, yeah, get me out of here. <laughs> I just, I just want to get ready for, I just want to get ready for dinner tonight. So um, that last one's a little bit lower. So here's a screenshot from a, um, from an, an actual funnel and you could see um, it ran, it's actually 15 days. Uh, we, we have a 16 day period here, but it actually ran for 15 days and you could see the gross sales were $47,359.04 with an average cart value or average order value of $109.88. And you could see some of these things, <coughs> excuse me, some of these things were within what we call KPI, key performance indicator, or were, were within those numbers that I showed you. So if you look at the green columns where it says sales, and you look at the middle one that says rate, you see that first number, it says 6.15%. And I told you, I said, our benchmark is 8%. So we're actually a little bit lower. So there's definitely things we can do to improve this conversion rate. Um, but then you look, we said 10% for the first order bump and you could see right, or for the first upsell, and you can see it's 11.93%. So we're actually above KPI. So overall, this funnel is doing pretty well, um, but there's definitely spots that we can, we can optimize it and make it better. And that's why having benchmarks in your business is so important because now you've got a target and you know what you're aiming for and you know where you can improve. So here's some essentials. Um, and again, this is something I would screenshot and I've actually done presentations like just on this. That's how important it is. So I'm not going to dwell on this too much. Um, I just want you to be aware of it. These are some things to keep in mind for high converting funnels. You have to define your unique selling proposition. Why should I do business with you given all the other choices available to me? There's a million other pairs of socks I could buy. Why should I do business with you? You have to know this. Um, always have a frequently asked questions. Focus on reiterating your USP, your unique selling proposition, and overcome purchase objections. That's, what, that's the purpose of a frequently asked question. It's not a filler. It's not to ask questions like, hey, are you guys awesome? Answer, yeah, we are. Like, that's, not what, <laughs> that's not what a fact is for. The frequently asked questions are for you to address any questions, any concerns they have before they become objections and they hurt your conversion rates. That's what a frequently asked question is for. So don't be afraid to actually put some real questions and some real answers in there because it'll, it'll help you in the long run. Um, an offer, you have to have a strong offer and it can make up for a weak copy, but a mediocre offer is like dead in the water. So you got to have a strong offer. Um, always be thinking what's the next thing they need and could you possibly bundle these things together for them so they get it all at once when they buy. 
Social proof, we are all wired to follow social proof. So testimonials, user generated content, reviews, all of this tells us that, hey, the tribe is doing this, it's safe, I can do this too. Risk reversal, um, someone has to take on the risk and it should never be your customer. This is your guarantee, these are your bonuses, they get to keep even if they ask for a refund. This is your 110% money back guarantee, which might sound scary, but it's actually one of the ways we were able to blow our competitors out of the water um, on Amazon. So um, it sounds scary, but the upside is gonna weigh out, it's gonna give you way more <laughs> revenue than the few people who try to like take advantage of it. Um, so try it at your own risk. But uh, it, it actually has been a really powerful um, tool for us. Um, address any objections to purchase by baking it into the funnel. Just basically always be addressing po possible objections so that you can guarantee yourself um, the conversion. And if you want to get real fancy, you can use something like intercom or even have a phone number so people can reach out to you because sometimes they just want to hear uh, a voice or they just want to get a response. They just want to know that there's actually a human on the other end before they actually start typing in their credit card number and, uh, and buy something from someone they've never met. So uh, one analogy I like to use is the leaky bucket. So imagine your visitors are, are getting poured into this bucket and all this water is coming out. Well, that's how most stores are built. It's a really, really leaky bucket. And we don't want to be leaky because that's your profit. So what we want to do is we want to put buckets underneath because we can't, we can't tape up the bucket. Listen, people are not going to buy. Only 3 to 4% of your visitors are ever going to purchase the first time. So we have to have... Uh, a, a place, a, a system to be able to collect this water, which is your retargeting and remarketing, okay? So really quickly, retargeting we use to maximize sales. Only 3% of people are ready to buy when they first come to your store or to your funnel or wherever. And um, we need to have an automated system in place to recover those sales from people who don't initially buy. So people who saw your sales page, people who saw your order form, people who saw your product page, people who abandoned the cart, um, even people who completed the order form but didn't, but didn't, you know, finish the purchase, they were so close that to let them slip out of your hands is like having a leaky bucket and just letting the water go everywhere. When you, what you really want to do is just put other buckets underneath to catch that water. So after all this work, you will likely just break even, and that is the objective. Okay, so ultimately, the business that can spend the most to acquire a customer, spend the most to acquire a customer, wins. If you expect to make a profit on the initial sale only, you will grow slowly if you can grow at all. You must make sure you can afford to buy customers, outspend your competitors, and have an effective strategy for maximizing your customer's value on the back end. That's a quote from Dan Kennedy. It's a very famous quote. Um, and this is the real secret sauce. When you build a system, when you focus on optimizing for average order value and frequency of purchase, you can literally afford to go buy more customers, outspend your competition, and render your competition just completely ineffective. And they will wonder, how are you able to cover so much ground and have so much exposure because they just won't be able to see what you're doing under the surface, the system you have in place. Your best prospects are your existing customers. Um, the most profitable thing you will ever do for your business uh, is to understand and ethically exploit the full net worth of a customer. And this, again, this goes back to frequency of purchase and average order value. This is really the secret sauce um, to be able to go out and to just take all the customers off the table. So you look at these, like, nobody will show you this, right? Because everyone, this is what they'll do. They'll go into a Facebook group. They'll, they'll put an arrow pointing at, at the sales and be like, boom, 50 Gs in 15 days, you know, right? And uh, next thing you know, they're, uh, they're selling you a course. So total uh, new customers were 431. If you look here, you can see count 431, right? So I'm going to break all these down. I'm going to show you the real numbers. Now, revenue, the, the e-com vanity metric was $47,359.04. Just so you're following along, right? That's the number there. Profit before ad spend. So that's after our, you know, our, our margins aren't super high on this product. It's a high, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a more expensive product. You know, it's in the $80 range of this front end offer, but we don't have a really great margin on it. So the profit on this product before ad spend was $11,910, just under, just under 12 grand. Our ad spend was $9,027.12. What? in 15 days to acquire those customers. So our net profit was $2,883.48. Now you might be wondering like, huh, seems like a lot of work to make like 2,900 bucks. <laughs> but 
this is where the system comes into play. This is where having um, a, a real system in place, not just firing from the hip and really understanding the true value of a customer comes into play. So front end profit per new customer, if you take 431 and divide it out, uh, divide out the 2883, you get $6.69 profit per customer, which by the way, is really good. Typically, you're breaking even on the front end, um, but you know, we've got a really nice optimized funnel, some good ads, and uh, just following our system because we, you know, we can do this pretty frequently because um, you know, we, we keep everything congruent and we build an audience, but that's our profit, right? Now, our post-purchase lifetime value per customer profit is $44.80. So we know on average, when we get a customer after that first purchase, they're worth just under $45 to us in pure profit um, over, we, we actually do long-term. So we do over the next six months. Like that's what we know. Monthly recurring revenue. So one thing that we always do, if possible, is we build in a uh, recurring revenue program in the back end, whether it's a subscription model, an auto ship, an info product, something that gets them on a low ticket recurring revenue program um, because it, again, maximizes the lifetime value, maximizes the frequency of purchase of that customer. So the monthly recurring revenue value per customer we know is $23.60. So the total life uh, long-term value per new customer profit, this is actual profit, um, not just revenue, is $6.69 for the first purchase, $44.80 for uh, subsequent purchases, and $23.60 for our recurring program. So that means our average customer is worth $75 in profit to us. So if you take $75.09, times the 431 customers, customers that we generated, we actually, in those 15 days, took in just over $32,000 worth of profit. And that I will take all day long and I will scale the you know what out of this, right? So that's where our, our competition's like, wait, how are you able to go out there and spend $9,000 or 10,000 or 11,000, you know? Well, it's because we know what we have in the back end because we have a system built. So the big payoff is your best prospects are your existing customers. All this work to get a customer is to set up the second purchase and beyond. And um, hopefully you see, you know, you really do need a system. This isn't something you would just want to be firing from the hip, throwing up some ads, you know, slapping some a store together and like, all right, let's, you know, if I build it, they will come and start building out a store. Um, this is what most people do, unfortunately. And it's just because there's a lack of focus and there isn't a focus again on the e-commerce vital few, those four things that really move your business. So that's uh, all I've got today. Hopefully um, you got a lot of value out of that. And I've been talking about our system and I've been talking about our e-com intensive. This is our flagship product. This is our accelerator. This is where it literally is built from the ground up for Amazon sellers who are ready to build an Amazon proof business and not be 100% dependent, still, still cash in on, uh, on Amazon, but start, start diversifying and start building their system, exactly like I showed you today. And this works on any platform. It's not platform dependent. It doesn't matter what you're currently built on or what you plan to build on. Um, the system is a system. It's fundamental and it just works. So if you'd like to book a free strategy session, it's 100% free um, and we will meet with you. And it really is a call where we're going to learn about your business and we're going to be honest with you and say, listen, Ecom Intensive is a perfect fit or it's really not a good fit at this time. And then you'll be able to decide if you'd like to uh, be a part of it. So if you'd like to apply for a strategy session, um, I encourage you to go to ecomunderground.com forward slash deal diva. And in true deal diva fashion, uh, she twisted my arm here and uh, she half twisted. I, I, I love, I love, uh, I love, you know, obviously giving, giving back and, and giving real value. Hopefully, um, hopefully that's, uh, I was able to do that on the, on the presentation today, but I also want to include my Facebook offer ads training. Now this training has sold in the past for at its max, we were selling this for $297. Um, so I'm actually going to throw that in for free, whether or not you sign up as an intensive um, member, whether or not you, you know, want to join our accelerator um, just because you are part of this amazing community and Barbara's amazing. And I just, um, I appreciate her having me on. Um, and I just want to, I just want to recognize just how amazing this community is. And, um, I'm actually going to give that to you for free. And what this is going to allow you to do this, this is an amazing program because it shows you, um, and actually I'm going to hop on here. Are you, are you on? Okay. So it actually shows you 
how to use Facebook ads. So external traffic. One of the one of the things that a lot of Amazon sellers don't realize is how much the big players are using off Amazon traffic and driving it to Amazon strategically with the right keywords, the right ranking, you know, are the, the right products, the right bundles, and the right, you know, coupon codes. So you can actually input in uh, single use coupon codes into Facebook, distribute them out through offers that are highly converting and do it strategically. So you're able to, to help with, you know, um, with your Amazon business and ranking and everything else. So I'm going to actually throw that in. It's a, uh, it's an amazing video course, step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, and you'll be able to follow along in the video and apply this. And literally in the same day, you'll be able to have these ads running and, uh, and helping your, your Amazon business. So that's only like, literally, uh, I am not exaggerating on this. Like literally we've never, uh, given this as a, as a bonus for just booking a call. So, um, it's just uh, exclusive for for Barbara, her community, and uh, and and the deal diva, the deal the deal diva audience. Cool. Hey, go ahead and turn your video on. So we've got some face. Thank you so much. What, a, what an amazing uh, presentation. Thank you. My mind is blown here. I was taking some screenshots here of some info um, so that I'm going to apply in my business. And by the way, I'm going to go download that Facebook offer ads and walk through that course myself and implement it in my business as an e-commerce seller uh, to kind of test it out. So if you have any questions about it, you can also hit me up. But I highly recommend go to ecomunderground.com slash dealdiva and sign up for one of his strategy calls. Yeah, get on the phone with this amazing guy. I mean, I didn't even know what I was getting into when he started his presentation. I'm, I'm blown away. So um, Brian, I'm so excited that you spent the day with us here. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys, again, can go to ecom with one M, underground.com slash dealdiva download the Facebook offer ads and jump in that course with me for free. He's not charging us for that. Uh, so thank you so much for offering that up and then uh, book a strategy call with Brian and, uh, and let him kind of start digging into your business and see what you're up to and how he can help you get to the next level uh, a lot faster. Uh, go ahead and stop sharing your screen so we can do a full face goodbye because I'm all about making that personal connection. Yeah, there. for sure. Yay. There we go. Cool beans. So Brian, again, tell us how, how can they find you? If they've got a question to ask you, um, just a quick question, how can we find you? What's your name of your podcast again? Yeah. So the podcast is, uh, it's really easy. It's marketing for e-commerce. Um, and, uh, it's a weekly show. I, um, you know, it's, a. I, I actually, I take a lot of the things, a lot of the content, a lot of things that we do in the intensive, I actually package it up and deliver it in the podcast. It's a real, it's like punchy, you know, it's just 10 to 12 minutes, but it's, it's actionable stuff that you could actually, you know, using your yeah, business. I just joined you on Spotify. So I, you keep mentioning the intensive. Give us a little bit more information about that. Is it e-com intensive? What's that all about? Yeah. So sorry, it, you know, we internally, uh, we all call it the intensive. So it's e-com intensive and um, it's a, uh, it, it really is, it is like an accelerator. So the biggest thing that I found was that it seemed to me when I was, you know, when I was building my, my off Amazon business. And when I've worked with clients, you know, there were a lot of people who knew one piece of the puzzle. They knew how to build Facebook ads or they knew how to build a store or they knew how to do uh, abandoned, you know, email marketing. They knew abandoned cart and they knew post-purchase marketing. Um, they knew how to do lead gen, but like nobody knew how to do the whole thing. Nobody. And that's what I wanted. I, I'm all about the vital few. I'm all about, we call it essentialism, focusing on the things that actually matter. So it gives you the freedom to just like, say no to all the noise, right? Like that idea. I like and, that saying no. And the first thing that I do when you come into the intensive is like, I just let you know, like you're, you're here and I'm like giving you permission to just say no to everything else. Just focus here. I promise you everything you need to build this out is here. Everything from step one, from buyer persona to building out your store, to understanding how to maximize conversions, maximize average order value, remarket to your customers. It's all here. It's all here. And that's, that's really why we call it the intensive. Um, it's an amazing community and um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing program. And, and obviously, you know, if it's the right fit for, if you, if you come on the call, um, you know, to your audience, if you come on the call and uh, you download the uh, offer ads training uh, completely free, there's, you know, no catch completely free. It's just because you're part of the deal diva community. Um, so when you go and you book the session, we will, we will go on the call um, I'm going to learn a lot about your business and just honestly tell you like, listen, we can help you. Um, or, you know, maybe not, maybe not now, maybe, you know, maybe sooner than later, maybe at a different time, but you will get an honest assessment and you'll walk away with a strategy. You'll understand 
where the where the opportunities are in your business because I've been in this game for a while. I've seen a lot of businesses and um, usually it's the same few things that can really help and tailored the right way can, can make a difference for, for everyone. Yeah, one of the things that you mentioned there kind of feeds back to what you were talking about when you were describing what a funnel was. You know, hyper-focused on one thing, beginning to end, um, you know, focus your energy uh, or just sort of a, a shotgun approach to learning. It's kind of the same thing. If you guys are anything like me, you buy a bunch of courses and it ends up being shelf help and it sits there and it's on all different subjects and you end up being completely unfocused and overwhelmed because you don't know what direction to go into and you sort of just deflate and fall flat, right? So what helps me with my personality style as an entrepreneur, and I know a lot of you share this, uh, is to focus on one thing beginning to end all the way through, cut off all distractions and I put on blinders, right? until I get from beginning to end and I'm able to implement those strategies in my business. And then I move on to the next thing. And I kind of have to have that guidance and that accountability of someone to say, look, here's step one, two, three, four, follow it. Now, what did you do today? Uh, it's not, you know, that I'm not capable of doing that myself. It's just the personality style of entrepreneur. Um, it's really helpful to have a coach, to have someone who knows what they're doing and walk you through it. Would you agree with that? That's and and you hit the nail on the head, Barbara. It's just it's just how we are, right? Like we're we have ideas, and we and 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 we the reason why we're doing this, the reason why we're paving our own way, right? The reason we're not saying like, oh, fine, I'll just I'll just ride the wave for forty years, and you know, hopefully, I have enough I have enough put away that that you know I'll be able to live the next forty years. You know, the way <laughs> how long we're living. Um, that's we're not okay with that. We're right? not wired we're that way. We're wired, wired that way. way. So yeah. we're always looking for opportunities. But sometimes, like all things, right? No matter how thin the pancake, there's always two sides, and it's a double-edged sword. So sometimes we can get in our own way because we're ambitious, because we're seeking opportunity, and that's why having a community. Because the way the program's laid out, we we have three core things. It's it's our um, it's the content to actually implement. It's the community, and it's the um, the calls. So, and, and I'll explain more on the call, how that works, but we have everything together so that you have the coaching, but you also have the content and you also have the support from the community. So that way, you know, that like this person's doing it, this person's doing it, this person's doing it. We're all on the same path. And yeah, we might have different businesses, but we're all implementing the same strategies kind of on the same path. So yeah. guys, I invite you to go to ecom underground with one M E C E C O M underground.com slash Gialiva. Download that free and go watch that Facebook course. I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to get in that course and go through the whole thing with you. Uh, you can reach out to me at facebook.com slash groups slash Gialiva. Ask me anything. Sign up for a strategy session with Brian Bowman. Thank you so much, Brian, for being on here today. Uh, and uh, I look forward to continuing our conversations and bringing you back to my, uh, my group when uh, we find something really interesting going on and new going on in e-commerce that you can share with us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It was awesome. Thank you for having me and have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.